What if I told you that the genetic story of the Turkish people is far more surprising than most ever imagined? That behind the familiar narrative of horse-riding nomads from Central Asia lies a deep, tangled history written in DNA, stretching from the Siberian steppes to the shores of the Aegean? For centuries, the story of the Turks was told in broad strokes. Fierce tribes galloping westward from Central Asia, conquering empires, and settling in Anatolia. It's a powerful story, epic, dramatic, and deeply rooted in cultural pride. But recent breakthroughs in genetics are flipping that script on its head. Scientists have been analyzing ancient DNA from graves in Mongolia, Anatolia, and the Middle East. They've studied the genes of modern Turkish people and compared them to everyone from ancient Persians to Neolithic farmers. And what they found, it's astonishing. The truth is, the Turkish identity isn't built on one ancestral thread. It's a rich tapestry. Sure, there's Central Asian ancestry in the mix, but that's only part of the picture. Genetic evidence shows that Turks today carry DNA from ancient Anatolians, Greeks, Romans, Slavs, Caucasian tribes, Persians, Arabs, and yes, those early Turkic nomads. This isn't just about science, it's about redefining identity. The Turkish people are one of the clearest examples of how history, war, migration, and empire can shape the DNA of a nation. In this video, we're diving deep into that story, into the ancient migrations, the surprises buried in the genome, and what it all means for how we understand where the Turks truly come from. Spoiler alert, the answer is much more powerful and diverse than anyone expected. To understand the roots of the Turkish people, we first have to travel back, not just a few centuries, but over a thousand years, into the heart of Central Asia. Picture endless grasslands, rugged mountains, and frozen steppes. This was the cradle of the early Turkic tribes, a region that includes parts of modern-day Mongolia, Kazakhstan, and southern Siberia. These early Turkic people weren't one single group, but rather a collection of nomadic tribes who shared language roots and cultural traits. They were skilled horsemen and warriors, known for their mobility, archery, and tribal governance. Their lifestyle was built around survival in harsh conditions, herding livestock, moving with the seasons, and relying on tightly knit clans for strength. But these weren't primitive societies. The Turkic tribes had complex systems of law, diplomacy, and trade. They interacted with powerful neighbors like the Chinese, Persians, and Mongols. And as they moved, they left traces linguistically, culturally, and genetically. One of the most famous early Turkic states was the Gokter Khaganate, which emerged in the 6th century CE in what is now Mongolia. The Gokturks created a script to write their language and forged vast alliances across the Silk Road. Their legacy set the stage for future Turkic expansions westward. Now, when we think of Turks in modern-day Turkey, we often assume most of their ancestry comes from these Central Asian tribes. But here's the twist. While the cultural and linguistic influence of these nomads was massive, the genetic contribution was smaller than expected. Recent studies suggest that the Central Asian Turkic DNA component in modern Turks is significant, but it blends with a much older Anatolian base. Still, these early Turkic nomads were the spark that ignited one of history's most transformative migrations. They didn't just bring language, they brought identity. And as they moved westward over centuries, their influence would reshape entire empires. From the Seljuks to the Ottomans, the spirit of the steppe followed. Their journey west wasn't just conquest, it was adaptation. The Turks who arrived in Anatolia didn't stay isolated. They intermarried, settled, and absorbed the rich cultures they encountered. But the foundation? It came from the steppes. So, the next time someone imagines ancient Turks as faceless horsemen charging across the plains, think again. These were dynamic, organized, and deeply influential people. And their DNA, though one piece of a larger puzzle, still flows in the veins of millions today. The story of the Turks takes a dramatic turn when we follow their journey from the vast steppes of Central Asia into the heart of the Middle East. This was not just a random migration. It was a slow but powerful movement that reshaped the entire region. And it began to take on momentum in the 11th century, during the rise of the Seljuk Turks. 
The Seljuks were a branch of the larger Oghuz Turkic tribes. They emerged in Central Asia, but unlike some of their nomadic cousins, they had a vision that went far beyond the steppes. In 1040, they made a major statement by defeating the Ghaznavids at the Battle of Dandanakin. But it was the Battle of Manzikert in 1071 that truly changed the course of history. Here, the Seljuks crushed the Byzantine army and opened the doors of Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, to Turkic settlement. This migration wasn't just a military conquest. It was a cultural and demographic transformation. Thousands of Turkic tribes began moving into Anatolia, bringing with them their language, customs, and social structure. But as they settled, something fascinating happened. They didn't just impose their identity. They blended with the people who were already there. Anatolia at the time was home to Greeks, Armenians, Kurds, Persians, and other ethnic groups. The Turks intermarried with these local populations and over generations. A unique genetic and cultural fusion took shape. This wasn't a one-sided assimilation. It was mutual. The Turks adopted new architecture, cuisine, music, and clothing styles. They brought Islam, but they also absorbed elements from Christian and Byzantine traditions. And this is where modern DNA studies provide clarity. Genetic research shows that modern Turks carry a mix of Central Asian, Anatolian, and Middle Eastern DNA. While the Turkic language and cultural identity dominated, the genetic picture is more diverse. The early migrants from Central Asia were relatively few in number compared to the established Anatolian population. Yet, their cultural legacy became dominant. The Seljuk period also marked the rise of Turkish as a major language in the region. Persian and Arabic were still widely used, especially in literature and administration, but Turkish began its climb toward becoming the everyday language of the people. The Seljuks also built magnificent cities, like Konya, that became centers of learning, art, and science. Their architecture blended Turkic, Persian, and Islamic influences, laying the foundations for what would later become the grandeur of the Ottoman Empire. So, while the migration into Anatolia started with warriors and nomads, it ended with poets, scholars, builders, and farmers. It wasn't just a conquest, it was the birth of a new civilization. The rise of the Ottoman Empire marked a colossal shift, not just politically and militarily, but biologically and culturally, too. At its peak, the empire stretched from the heart of Europe to the Arabian deserts, from North Africa to the Caucasus. It wasn't just a superpower, it was a melting pot of civilizations, and this left a deep genetic imprint on the Turkish people we know today. Founded at the end of the 13th century by Osman I, the Ottomans were originally one of many Turkic principalities in Anatolia. But they rose swiftly, absorbing rivals and expanding rapidly. As they conquered vast territories, the Ottomans didn't merely govern, they integrated. Soldiers, artisans, scholars, and administrators were brought in from across the empire. And many of them didn't just serve, they stayed, settled, married, and became part of the evolving genetic fabric of the empire. This means that the people living in modern-day Turkey today don't descend solely from Central Asian Turks or the early Seljuk migrants. Instead, their DNA is a living record of centuries of empire-building and intermingling. Genetic studies of Turkish populations reveal this complexity clearly. There are clear links to Central Asian Turkic ancestry, yes, but also strong genetic connections to Balkan, Caucasian, Arab, Persian, and even North African populations. One fascinating example is the empire's famous Defshirm system. Christian boys from the Balkans were taken, converted to Islam, trained as elite soldiers or administrators, and rose to powerful positions within Ottoman society. Many of them eventually married Turkish women and had families, blending Balkan genetics into the heart of the Ottoman elite. Then there's the harem culture, often misunderstood today. While exaggerated in popular media, the imperial harem was a place where women from every corner of the empire, Greek, Circassian, Ukrainian, Albanian, Arab, became part of the royal household. The mothers of many Ottoman sultans were not ethnically Turkish, but their children were raised as heirs to a Turkic Islamic legacy. This contributed to a cosmopolitan gene pool that was uniquely Ottoman. 
even within Anatolia itself, the rural villages and urban centers became microcosms of empire. Greeks, Armenians, Kurds, Jews, and Arabs lived side by side with ethnic Turks. Over generations, intermarriage and cultural fusion blurred the lines, and today's Turkish DNA reflects that blending. In short, the Ottoman Empire didn't just conquer. It absorbed, merged, and transformed. Its strength lay in its diversity, and that diversity now lives on in the genes of modern Turks. When you walk the streets of Istanbul or Ankara today, you're not just looking at the descendants of Central Asian horsemen. You're seeing a people shaped by centuries of global interaction. Warriors, merchants, scholars, slaves, princes, and poets, all bound together by the imperial glue of the Ottomans. And thanks to modern genetics, we can finally trace that incredible story not just in books, but in blood. When scientists began decoding the genomes of modern Turks, they stumbled upon something unexpected. Clear traces of East Asian and Siberian genetic markers still present in Turkish DNA today. It was a stunning reminder of just how far the ancestors of the Turks had traveled, and how deeply those early migrations still echo in the genetics of their descendants. These genetic threads point directly to the Turkic homeland, the wide open steppes of what is now southern Siberia, Mongolia, and parts of Central Asia. Thousands of years ago, the proto-Turkic peoples roamed this region, herding animals, living in yurts, and moving with the seasons. They shared genetic links with ancient Siberian hunter-gatherers and East Asian populations, including groups that also gave rise to the Mongols and Tunguzic peoples. As the Turkic tribes began their long migration westward, spanning from Mongolia to the Caspian and beyond, they didn't lose their biological identity entirely. While they mixed with many populations along the way, a core part of their genetic ancestry remained intact. Modern studies using autosomal DNA, Y-chromosome markers, and mitochondrial DNA all show a small but significant percentage of East Asian and Siberian ancestry in the modern Turkish population. It's not dominant because of centuries of mixing with Anatolian, Balkan, and Middle Eastern populations, but it's unmistakably there especially in some regions of Anatolia and among people with known Central Asian heritage, those markers are clearer. This genetic legacy is more than a scientific footnote. It connects modern Turks to their ancient nomadic roots. It's proof that even after empires rose and borders shifted, a piece of the steppe traveled with them, quietly carried in their cells through centuries of change. Long before the first Turkic horsemen ever set foot in Anatolia, this land was already rich with human history, and even richer in genetic diversity. Modern genetic research has shown that the DNA of people living in Turkey today still carries the deep imprint of the many ancient civilizations that once thrived in this region. Anatolia, or Asia Minor, was home to some of the earliest farming communities in the world, going back over 10,000 years. These early Neolithic people left a strong genetic legacy and their DNA forms the deepest layer of Anatolia's population. Over the millennia, waves of migration, Indo-Europeans, Hittites, Phrygians, Greeks, Romans, Armenians, and others, added new threads to the region's genetic fabric. Studies of ancient remains from archaeological sites like Katalhoyuk and Hattusa show strong genetic continuity between ancient Anatolians and many modern Turkish people. In fact, the bulk of Turkish DNA today is more closely related to ancient populations from the Eastern Mediterranean, the Caucasus, and the Levant than to Central Asia. When the Seljuk Turks began arriving in the 11th century, they didn't replace the people living in Anatolia. They mixed with them. The result was a population that adopted the Turkish language and identity over time, but retained much of its ancient genetic makeup. This helps explain why modern Turks have such a wide range of physical appearances and genetic markers. Beneath the Turkic cultural identity lies a deep layered heritage, one that ties modern Turkey not just to the steppes of Central Asia, but to the cradle of civilization itself. It's a reminder that identity is shaped as much by the soil people stand on as by the flags they carry. When we look at the Turkish people today, what does their DNA actually say about who they are? The answer is complex, but fascinating. Turkey, positioned at the crossroads of Europe and Asia, has always been a land of movement, conquest, 
and cultural fusion. And that rich history is clearly written in the genes of its people. Modern genetic studies consistently show that Turkish people are not a homogenous group descended solely from Turkic migrants from Central Asia. In fact, only about 10% to 15% of the average Turkish genome comes from Central Asian Turkic ancestors. This was a surprising find for many, because the language and cultural identity are so strongly tied to Turkic heritage. But as geneticists dug deeper, the story became much richer. The majority of Turkish DNA actually comes from indigenous Anatolian sources, layered over thousands of years. This includes genetic traces from ancient farmers of the Neolithic period, Indo-European-speaking groups like the Hittites and Phrygians, and classical civilizations such as the Greeks and Romans. Later, populations like the Byzantines, Armenians, Kurds, Arabs, and Persians left additional genetic footprints, creating an incredibly diverse human mosaic. Another key feature of the Turkish genetic profile is the presence of Mediterranean and Caucasus DNA pointing to long-standing ties with neighboring regions. There's also minor but traceable input from Jewish, Balkan, and Levantine communities, especially in Western Turkey, where the Ottoman Empire had large, diverse urban populations. Interestingly, even the Central Asian component, though relatively small, is still visible in specific genetic markers, especially on the paternal Y chromosome side. These are often associated with Turkic and Mongolic steppe tribes, and provide a living link to the nomadic warriors who once rode across the Eurasian plains. This complex genetic portrait has big implications. It shows that the modern Turkish people are not the result of a single migration or cultural shift, but of thousands of years of intermixing and adaptation. It's a population shaped by waves of movement, conquests, marriages, trades, and the rise and fall of empires. And yet, despite this vast diversity, Turkish people today overwhelmingly identify with a shared language, national identity, and cultural heritage. This unity, despite their diverse ancestry, is a testament to how culture can unify even the most genetically mixed populations. Ultimately, the DNA of the Turkish people tells a story not just of Turkic warriors, but of Anatolian farmers, Roman citizens, Byzantine clergy, nomads of the steppe, and everything in between. It's a living timeline of human civilization in one of the world's most historically important regions. Science doesn't erase identity, it deepens it. And the story of Turkish DNA shows how the past lives on, not just in books or ruins, but in the blood and bones of the present. In the age of DNA testing and ancient genome sequencing, history is no longer just what's written in books, it's written in us. For the Turkish people, Science has added new depth and dimension to the understanding of their roots. The story that once centered solely on Central Asian migrations has expanded into a sweeping, interconnected human journey that stretches across continents and millennia. Genetic research doesn't erase cultural heritage. It complements it. It explains why Turkish culture feels at home both in the East and West. It reveals how the DNA of nomadic horsemen from the steppes merged with that of Anatolian farmers, Mediterranean sailors, Persian scholars, and Byzantine artisans to create something entirely new. In many ways, Turkish identity isn't about a single origin. It's about adaptation, fusion, and resilience. This scientific lens also brings a sense of unity to diversity. While modern Turks may come from a wide range of genetic backgrounds, they share a national story, language, and culture that transcends biology. Knowing that their ancestors came from different corners of the world doesn't dilute identity. It makes it richer. It shows that being Turkish is not about being pure, but about being connected. More importantly, it encourages a deeper respect for others. If identity is fluid and shared through common ancestors and migrations, then borders and labels start to feel less rigid. We realize that the past is more complex than simple categories, and so are people. In the end, genetics reminds us that human history isn't a straight line, it's a web. And the story of the Turkish people is one of the most vibrant threads in that tapestry, woven together by time, culture, and the undeniable bond of shared humanity.